26 uh, pledges in particular when it comes to the ending of deforestation are incredibly important in Asia. Um, there is not only the challenges with this, where people depend sometimes on livelihoods from these forests. Um, so it's about ensuring um, sustainable growth and employment opportunities for people. Uh, but at the same time, there is a significant uh, benefit to not only preserving um, that nature, but um, restoring it. That is un almost unique to Southeast Asia in terms of the potential to generate uh, nature positive outcomes, to generate carbon credits. In the region as well, the corporates that are exporting significant amounts, they're also facing now increased scrutiny on their exports when it comes to deforestation free supply chains, uh, the emissions in their own, own production, as well as the emissions from transporting um, their goods, so even including maritime transport. But Singapore, of course, remains a, is a major hub for this. All of these ones become under more scrutiny after the COP26 pledges. Governments were doing their best in this, but we also see quite a significant um, uptake of corporates and investors on furthering that agenda and decarbonizing. And so for corporates, it is now about helping prepare for a world of net zero, um, operationally decarbonize, transform their portfolio, engage with environmental commodities, and develop the strategy around this. We've seen the 2030 commitments being strengthened and accelerated. Uh, we've seen the launch of the Glasgow Finance Alliance for net zero with 130 trillion on, um, on, on finance now channeling that um, towards sustainability. This is one area where we're very keen on contributing in, in Asia and in our office here from Singapore. I've seen substantial improvements in, uh, in energy efficiency uh, by looking at how energy is used throughout the manufacturing process and also materials efficiency as well in reducing waste and then recycling materials. Um, so one of the ways in which people do this is to create a digital twin. It's not always appropriate, but, but that's one of the methods of, of the process and then be able to pull it apart and work out the different options that can, can be put into that process. Another thing people do sometimes is to, is to bring in carbon prices into their, all their investment decision making. Now you can do that as, a, as just as a, as a test to see whether the decision would be different if it faced if you faced a certain carbon price, or you can build it in to all to all decisions as as a as a core uh, assumption. But uh, but those are two ways in which um, one can introduce that the, the innovations into into manufacturing uh, investment decisions. Firms are now saying, oh, "Well, we need to tackle this. It's a strategic priority." We want to push this transformation through our entire portfolio. And that's why the digital twin comes in as a way of doing that at scale. Yeah, so this is uh, this question of deep transformation has to come from the top where it's led. Um, it uh, is still fairly new for most organizations. And so that, uh, that leadership is needed to drive the, the culture change and understanding throughout the organization and to set it as a priority, a strategic priority. Uh, whereas three years ago, very few firms had it as a strategic priority. I think now, if energy is an important part of the, your business, either as an input or, or an output, then it is a strategic priority now, and, um, and it will be for the next two decades.